the R. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is James, and this is English Reading One Hundred Days Challenge. And today is day fourteen. I think、um, I already finished marking four point zero the 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 last time. So yes, of course. So I'm gonna you know do some reviews this time and. Emphasize some key points. Let me go to the. Yes, let me go to the、uh, notes page. Sorry, sorry. We we're gonna go to the content table. So we're gonna go to the content table first, and then we're gonna pick up some. Would you like a breakfast wrap or pastry to go with your lunch? Um, I think important part of the book. Okay, your total is six fifty. Wait. For the order. How can I do that? <laughs> um, table of content, cover series page, title page, copyright, fundamental trends shaping marketing. Summary marketing amid. Paradoxes: The influence of digital subculture, youth acquiring acquiring the, acquire acquiring the mind share, women growing the market share, netizen, youth, women and netizen, moving from traditional to digital marketing, interpreting traditional to and and digital marketing. Redefining marketing in digital economy, the new consumer paths, new framework for marketing for marketing in the digital economy. Understanding how people buy from four A's to five A's, diving from awareness to advocacy, the old zone, marketing productivity metrics. Okay. We gonna go to summarize of the part one. Summary, summary, horizontal, inclusive, and social. Marketers need to embrace the shift to a more horizontal, inclusive, and social business landscape. The market is becoming more inclusive. Social media eliminates geogra geographic and demographic barriers, enabling people to connect and communicate, and companies to innovate through collaboration. Customers are becoming more horizontally oriented. They are becoming increasingly a. Uh, they they are they are becoming increasingly aware of marketing communications from brands and are rely rely relying relying instead of、uh, instead on a rely relying instead on the F factor friends families fans and followers. Finally, 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 the customer buying process is becoming more social than. It has been previously. Customers are paying more attention to their social circle in making decisions. They seek advice and reviews, both online and offline. The paradoxes of marketing to connected customers: online versus offline interaction, informed versus distracted customer, and negative versus positive advocacy. 
We have always believed that the word marketing should be rewritten as market in, written, written, writ, writing it, writing it that way. Remind us that marketing is about dealing with ever changing market that and and that to understand cutting edge marketing. We should understand how the market has been evolving in recent years. The clues and trends are there for us to see a new breed of customers. The one that will be the majority in the near future is emerging globally: youth, urban, middle class with strong mobility and connectivity. While the, while the mature markets are dealing with an aging population, the emerging market is enjoying is enjoying is enjoying the demographic div, di, dividend. Um, dividend of a younger, more productive population. They are not only young; they are also rapidly migrating to our urban areas and embracing a big city lifestyle. The majority of them are in the middle class or above, and thus have a sizable income to to spend. Moving up from lower socio economic status status, that I they aspire to accomplish greater go goal, greater goals. Experience finer things and emulates behaviors of people in in high classes. These traits make them a compelling market for marketers to pursue. But what distinguishes this new type of customers from other markets we have seen before in their tendency to be mobile? Is their tendency to be mobile? They move. They move. They move around a lot. Often commute. And live life as a as a faster pace. Everything should be instant and time efficient. When they are interested in things they see on television, they search they search for them on their mobile devices. When they are deciding whether to buy something in store, they research price and quality and, and quality online. Being digital natives, they. Can make they can make purchases decisions every everywhere and any time. Sorry, um, um, they move around a lot, open commutes, and live life at a faster pace. Everything everything should be instant and time efficient. They are interested in things that they see on television. They search for them and their mobile devices. When they are deciding whether to buy something in store, they research prices and quality online. Being digital natives, they can make purchase decisions everywhere and any time. Involving a wide range of devices, despite their internet savvy, they love to experience things physically. They value high-touch engagement when interacting with brands. With brands, they are also very social. They commun they communicate with the trust they they and trust one another. In fact, they trust a network of friends and family more than they trust co corporations and brands. In short, they are highly connected. Breaking the myth of connectivity. Connectivity is arguably the most important game changer in the history of marketing. Granted, it 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 it, it can no longer be considered a new buzzword, but it has been changing many fa f factors of marketing, and is not and is not showing signs of slowing down. Connectivity has made us question many mainstream theories and major assumptions that we have learned about customers, product, and brand management. Connectivity、uh, significantly reduces the cost of interaction among companies, employees, channel ch channel partners, customers, and other relevant parties. It, this in turn lowers the barriers to entering new markets. Enables concurrent product development,、uh, concurrent product development, and shortens the time frame for brand building. 
There have been various cases of how connectivity quickly disrupted long established industries with seemingly high entry barriers. Amazon has disrupted the brick and mortar, uh, brick and mortar bookstores and later the publishing industry. Likewise, Netflix has disrupted the brick and mortar video rental stores and also with the, li with the likes of Hulu. Has shaken up the the satellite, the satellites, and cable and cable TV services. In a similar fashion, Spotify and Apple Music have changed the way music dis music distribution works. Connectivity also changes the way we see the competition and customers. Today, collaborations with competitors and co-creation with customers are central. Competition is no longer a zero-sum game. Customers are no longer the passive receivers of companies' segmentation, targeting, and positioning moves. Connectivity accelerates market dynamics um, to the point where it is virtually impossible for a company to stand alone and rely on internal resources to win. A company must a company must face the reality that. To win it, must collaborate with external parties, and even involve customers' participation. The success for Procter and Gamble's Connect Plus development program exemplifies this. Exemplifies this. Instead of protecting the brand equity of uh, Febreds, Febreds as its own competitive advantage. PNG licensed the trademark for new categories. Partners, um, partners, companies such as Case and Bazaar launched Honeywell, Honeywell um, scented fans and out an order and order and order removing vacuum bag filters that carry the free the Fabrice brand. Despite despite the obvious influence, connectivity is often under under underrated. It's often underrated as a mere application of technology that marketers need to deal with. Need to deal with seeing connectivity from technological point of view alone would often be misleading. In the context of strategy. Many marketers view connectivity simply as an enabling platform and infrastructure that support the overall direction. A bigger picture view of connectivity allows marketers to avoid this trap. While it is true that connectivity has been driven by technology, namely screen technology and the internet, it is importance. Its importance is far more strategic. A survey by Google reveals that 90% of our interactions with media are now facilitated by screens, smartphones, tablets, laptop, and television screens. Screens are becoming so important in our lives that we spend more than four hours of our leisure time daily to use multiple screens sequential, sequ sequentially and simultaneously. And Behind these screen-based interactions, the internet has been backbone. Global internet traffic has grown by a factor of thirty from um, to twenty thousand to twenty fourteen, connecting four out of ten out of ten people in the world, according to a Cisco forecast. We will see another tenfold jump of. A global uh, internet traffic by 20, 2019, powered by more than 11 billion connected mobile devices. With such a massive reach, connectivity transforms the way customers behave. When shopping in store, um, most customers would search for price comparison and product reviews. Google 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 research shows that eight of time eight out of time smartphone users in the United States do mobile research in store, even when watching television advertising. More than half of the TV audience in Indonesia 
conducts mobile search. This is a trend affecting customers globally. Derivative, 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 derivative. William, William, William. The derivative products of the internet also enable transparency. Social media such as Twitter and Instagram enable customers to show and, and share their customer experience, which further inspires other customers from the same or a lower class to emulate and purchase a new experience. Communal rating sites such as TripAdvisor and Yelp empower customers to make informed choices based on the wisdom of the crowd. Thus, thus, to fully embrace connectivity, we need to view it holistically. While mobile connectivity through mobile devices is important, it is the most basic level of connectivity in such in which the internet serves only as a communications infrastructure. The next level is experiential connectivity. Widths, the widths, the widths. We're not only, um, we're not only, we are no longer, we are no longer concerned only about the widths, but about the depth of connectivity. The ultimate level is social connectivity which is about the strength of connect, connection in communities of, cons, of customers. Since connectivity is closely related to the youth segment, it is, often, it is also often considered relevant only for younger generation of customers. As a result, many marketers implement connected marketing as a separate youth strategy without fully understanding how it fits how it fits with the overall marketing strategy it is true that being digital natives young customers are the first to adopt connectivity but they inspire their seniors to adopt connectivity as well moreover as the world population ages as the world population ages over time Digital natives will become the majority and the connectivity eventually will become the new normal. The importance of connectivity will transcend technology and demographic. Oops. Well, uh, transcend technology and demographic segment. Um, Connectivity changes the key foundation of marketing, the market itself. Paradox number one, online interaction versus offline interaction. The Im impact of connectivity with regards to online and offline business is not, clear is not clear cut. While online business have taken up a significant portion of the market in recent years, we do not believe that they will accomplish they will complete, completely replace offline businesses. Similarly, we do not believe that online new wave marketing will ultimately replace the offline legacy marketing. In fact, we believe that they need to coexist to deliver the best customer experience. Here's why. In our increasingly high-tech world, high-tech interaction is becoming new differentiation Birchbox, an online first beauty product retailer, opened its brick and mortar store to uh, complement its existing e-commerce business. Um, the retailer provides iPad, iPads. The retailer provides iPads to make personalized recommendations, mimicking mimicking its online personalization scheme. Zappos and online shoes and closing retailers relies heavily on very personal call center interaction as a winning formula buying shoes online
can be a daunting task for many customers, but a touch of personal consult consultation consultation from the call center agents reduces the psychological barrier. Another example is Bank of, Ma Bank of America's Express fin Financial Centers. When making transactions on ATMs in these centers, customers can video chat with a person teller for assistance. The service combines ATM convenience with a personalized human touch. Even Amazon needed to create a physical channel with its dash button, which allows shoppers to automatically rep 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 replenish, replenish household products such as coffee and detergent with a push of a doorbell-sized button. It is Amazon's early Internet of Things attempt to connect otherwise offline at devices such as a coffee maker and a washing machine. A coffee maker and a washing machine. On the other hand, a high-tech interface can also enhance a predominantly high-touch interaction, making it more compelling. Macy's Shop Beak. Macy's Shop Beacon project is an, exam is an example of this, with Apple's iBeacon transmitters um, installed in various locations within Macy's store, customers will be alerted with highly targeted offerings throughout their journey in store. They walking past a certain department, um, the customer might be reminded of their shopping list, receive discount notifications, and get gift recommendations through an iPhone app. As transaction data accumulate over time, the offerings will become more personal, personalized to each shopper profile. Another example is John Lewis Sofa Studio, which allows customers to select a sofa model from 3D printed miniatures. Miniatures by placing a miniature, miniature alongside a selection of fabric in front of a computer screen, customers can see what their sofa will look like on a screen. It gives a very special, a very playful customer experience when choosing sofa model and fabric. As it turned out, the online and offline world will eventually coexist and, 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 and converge and converge. Um, technology touches both the online world and the offline physical space, making it possible, making it possible for the ultimate offline, online to offline uh, convergence. Sensor technology such as near field communication, NFC, and location-based iMecon provide a far more compelling customer experience. In the engine room, big data, big data and net analytics enables the personalization that new customers are longing for. All of these complements complements the traditional human interface that was the backbone of marketing before the rise of the internet. Traditional and contemporary media for um, marketing communications such as television and social media will also complement each other. Many people go to Twitter for breaking news, but eventually return to television and watch CNN for more credible and deeper news coverage. On the other hand, watching television is often a trigger for people to purchase online activities, to pursue online activities on their smartphones. For example, a movie showing on television might trigger an online review, re, review search. A television commercial can also be a call to a call to action for people to buy products online. The characters, the characters of the new uh, customers, prompt us to realize that the future of marketing will be seamless blend of online and offline experience across customer paths. In the beginning, brand awareness and uh, uh, and appeal will become will will come from a mix of analytics powered marketing communications, past customer experience, past customer experiences, and recommendations from friends and family, both online and offline. Customers will then follow up through a series of further research. Um, 
uh, ut utilizing the reviews from other customers, again, online and offline. If customers decide to make a purchase, they will experience a personalized touch from both the machine and the human interface experienced customer uh, customers experienced customers will in turn become advocates for inexperienced customers experienced customers will in turn become advocates for inexperienced customers entire experiences are rec recorded entire experiences are recorded which further improves the accuracy of the analytic, analytics, analytics, analytics engine. Engine experienced customers will in turn become advocates for inexperienced customers. Entire experiences are recorded, which further, which further improves the accuracy of the analytics engine. In a highly connected world, a key challenge for brands and companies is to integrate online and offline elements into the total consumer experience. Good. On grand, on grand strategy. Marketing insight from A to Z by Philip. Kotler, that's it. Let's try this one. Communication and promotion. Okay. This is a new book, Marketing Insight, Marketing Insights from A to Z. Okay. Um, this is the preface. My 40 year career in marketing has produced some knowledge and even a little wisdom reflecting on the state of the discipline. It occurs to me that it is time to revisit the basic concepts of marketing. First, I listed the 80 concepts in marketing critical today and spent time mulling over their meanings and implications for sound business practice. My, prim my primary aim was to ascertain, was to ascertain the best principles and practices and practices and practices for effective and innovating marketing. I found this journey to be filled with many surprises, yielding new insights and perspectives. I didn't want to write another 800 page textbook on marketing, and I didn't want to repeat thoughts and, pass and, and, passages, and passages that I've written in previous books. I want to present fresh and and stimulating ideas and, and stimulating ideas and perspectives in, in a format that could be picked up, um, sampled, digested, and put down anytime. This short book is the result, and it was written it was written with the following audiences in mind: managers who have just learned that they need to know something about marketing. You could be a financial vest. You could be a financial vice president, a, an executive director of a nonprofit organization, or an entrepreneur about to launch a new product. You may not even have time to read marketing for dummies with its three hundred pages. Today's today's central problem today's central problems 
Today's central problem facing businesses. Today's central problem facing business is not a shortage of goods, but a shortage of customers. Most of the world's industries can produce far more goods than the world's consumers can buy. Overcapacity results from individual competitors projecting a greater market share growth than as than as than than as possible. If each company projects a 10% growth in its sales and the total market is growing by only 3%, the result is the result is excess. The result is excess capacity. This is this in turn leads to hyper competition. Competitors, despite to attract customers, lower their prices and add giveaways. These strategies ultimately mean lower margins, lower profits, some failing companies, and more mergers and acquisitions. Marketing is the answer to how to compete on basis on basis other than prices. Because of overcapacity, marketing has become more important than ever. Marketing is the company's customer manufacturing department. Marketing is not the art of finding clever ways to dispose of what you make. Marketing is the art of creating genuine customer value. It is the art of helping your customers becoming better off. The marketer's watchwords are quality, service, and value. Is to make selling superfluous. Superflows. Marketing, marketing is the ability to hit the mark. Marketing. Here is my definition of marketing. Marketing management is the art and science of choosing target markets, and getting, keeping, and growing customers. Through creating, communicating, and delivering superior customer value, or if you like a more detailed definition, marketing is the business function that identifies unfulfilled needs and wants, defines and measures their magnitudes and potential profitability, determines which target markets and organizations can best serve. Decides on appropriate products, service, and programs to serve these chosen markets, and calls upon everyone in the in the organization to think and serve the customers. In short, marketing's job is to convert people's changing needs into profitable pro into profitable opportunities. Marketing's aim is to create value by offering superior solutions,、um, saving buyers search and transaction time and effort, and delivering to the whole so society a higher standard of living. Marketing practice today must go beyond a fixation on transactions and often leads to a sell. To, it leads to a sell. Today and a, a lost consumer leads to a sell today and lost and a lost customer tomorrow. The marketing goal is to build a mutually profitable long-term relationship with its customers, not just sell a product. A business is worth more than the lifetime value of its customers. This calls for knowing your customers well enough to deliver relevant and timely offered. Services and messages that meet their individual needs. The function of marketing is typically organized as a department within a business. This is good and bad. Marketing is much too important to leave to the marketing department. In a truly great marketing organization, you can't tell who is in marketing department. Everyone in the organization. Has to make decisions based on the impact of the customers. The same thought was well stated by Professor Philippine Neat. 
you will not obtain the real marketing uh, culture by ha by hastily creating a marketing department or team. Even if you appoint extremely capable people to the job, marketing begins with top management. If top management is not cons convinced of the need to to be customer minded and how the marketing idea can accept it and implement it by the rest of the company. Advertising. And, and I and most people have a, a love-hate relationship with advertising. Yes, I enjoy new absolute vodka print ad. Where will, where will they hide the famous bottle? And I enjoy the humor in British ads and the risque and the risque quality of the French ad. Even some advertising jingles and melodies stick in my and even though and some advertising jingles and melodies stick in my head in my head, but I don't enjoy most ads. In fact, I actively ignore them. They interrupt my thoughts process. Do some do worse. They irritate me. The best ads not only are creative, creative, they sell. The best ads, the best ads, not only are creative, are creative, they sell. They sell. The best ads, the best ads, the best ads, not the best ads, not only create creative, they sell. The best ad, the best ads. Not all in creative. The best ads, not all in creative. The best ads, not all in creative. They sell. The best ads, not all in creative. They sell. The best ads, not only are creative. The best ads, not only are creative. They sell. The best ads, not only are creative. They sell. The best ads, not only are creative. They sell. Creativity alone is not enough. Advertising must be more than an art form, but but the art but the art helps. William Burbage, former head of Deloitte Dam and Bur and Burbage, observed: the facts are not enough. Don't don't forget that Shakespeare used some pretty harsh. Hackneyed, hackneyed plots, yet his message came through with great execution. Even a great ad execution must be renewed, or it will become outdated. Coca-Cola cannot continue forever with a catch a, a catchy phrase like "the real thing." Coke is it, or I'd like to teach the world to sin. Advertising wear out is a reality. Advertising leaders differ on how to create an effective ad campaign. Rosa Rosa Reeves of Ted Bates and Company Advertising Agency flavored linking the brand directly to the single benefit as Rolla's bills relief. Leo Burnett preferred to create a character that experienced the products as to what it's to prefer the green giant and Felsbury dog doughboy, the Ma the Marlboro cowboy, and the several other mythical personalities. The Doy Dane and Burnbarch. An agency、uh, favored developing a narrative story with episodes centered on a problem and its outcome. And its outcome, thus, a Federal Express ad shows a person worried about receiving something at the promised time, who is then reassured by using FedEx tracking system. The aim of advertising is not to state the facts about a product, but to sell a solution or 
a dream, address their advertising to the customer's aspiration. That is what Ferrari, Tiffany, Gucci, Ferrari. Or a train addressing address your advertising address your advertising to the customer's aspiration, but the promise of dreams not only makes people suspicious of advertising. They don't believe that their selection of a particular car or print or perfume will make them. Any more attractive or interesting? Stephen Leelock, humorist and educator, an educator, humorist and educator, took a cynical view of advertising. Advertising may be described as the science of arresting the human intelligence long enough to get money to get money from it. Advertising may be described as the science of arresting the human intelligence long enough to get money from it. As primarily create product awareness, sometimes product knowledge, less often product preference, and more rarely product purchase. That's why advertising cannot do the job alone. Sales promotion. May be needed to trigger a purchase. A salesperson might be needed to elaborate on the benefits and close the sale. What is what is worse, many ads are not particularly creative. Most are not memorable. Take auto auto take auto ads. The typical one shows a new car racing 100 miles. An hour around mountain blends, but we don't have the mountains in Chicago. Most ad agencies blame blame the lack of create creative creativity on on, on the clients. Clients while wisely ask their agencies to come up with three ads, from mild to wild, but then the client typically settles for the mild for an unsafe one. Thus, the client pays a role in killing good advertising. Companies should ask questions before using advertising. Would advertising create more satisfied clients than if our company spent the same money on making a better product, improving company service, or creating stronger brand experiences? I wish that companies should spend more time. And money on designing an ex ex exceptional product, and less on trying to physic phys physic physic phys physically manipulate perceptions through expensive advertising campaigns. The better the product, the less that has to be spent advertising it. The best advertising is done by your satisfied. The best advertising is done by your satisfied, satisfied customers. That's it for today. Thanks, and see you next time.